that again. Okay, today I'm gonna to show you what we do in the clinic and for rehab for cervical genic headaches, meaning someone who has got headaches coming from the cervical spine. Now that you may feel either from the back of the head, either coming through this part of the side of your head and even to the eyeball. So this is not pain that goes down the arm or like a disc bulge type pain that's referred into the shoulder right down the arm. This is simply from sort of the cervical spine upwards. And most of the time we find it's around that C2-3 region that the person's got the problem and that's giving them the headache. So I'm gonna show you a two-parter. This video is gonna be about the treatment we do, soft tissue modes, this is a for the neck and the shoulder. And then the second video is about all the rehab, so don't forget to watch that one. So with someone like Claire, if she's getting cervical genetics, obviously we assess what range they've got, if they've lost range, that sort of thing. Most of the time, if someone has you know, pain on one side. Usually this is like, I've got headaches, they feel it, maybe the back of the head, maybe when they push their hands in like into here, it's really tender. They might find, yeah, that's really sore, but it's not their headache. The headache usually comes up into the back of the head and then around the side of the head. And if it gets real bad, it's in the eyeball. And they think, oh, you know, my eyes sore, I'm feeling this headache into here. And when we go through assessment and we, we find out that, oh, okay, it's actually the cause is sitting in here and you're getting referred type symptoms. So what we do is work on soft tissue release. Now, because it's up the top here and because the trap is, starts down here, this trap we usually find, the upper trap part, has got quite a bit of tension in and knots through here. Okay, so knots meaning areas of muscle that feel like they're knotted, okay? And these are usually tight areas of bands of tissue that become hypersensitive. Now, that even, sometimes when you get into these parts here, this can refer up as well. So they might find, I can get in here, and you've gotta be careful how much pressure you put through these things because you can easily flare it up. Like I could get in here and go too hard and make her worse on the table. The idea is to make her better on the table. So we've gotta make sure that the pressure here is just enough to try and release the muscle tissue, but not aggravate at the same time. That's a tricky thing to do, but that's where you're gonna win the most, is trying to get release of this muscle tissue actually calms down the whole thing. Now, like I said, the problem's sort of coming around C2-3, but because of this, we usually find it's either chicken or egg. Did the upper trap tension here, maybe due to posture of their, what they're doing at work, whatever's going on, maybe they're doing overhead activity in the gym, is that causing this or is this causing that? It doesn't really matter because you've got to work on, well the therapist has got to work on both areas to get this right. Um, so the first thing we look at is, like I said, is come down into this trap and see what is going on there. Make sure that's not missed. Have a, we hunt around and try and find, okay, when done, not only the lower trap, but in that levator scap where the muscle comes in, hooks into the top of that shoulder. Blade. Usually there's some really tight sort of sensitive areas in here, which we want to sort of navigate around and not spending too much time on this but nice slow even pressure through here to try and get some sort of drop in the muscle tension because if we get a drop in muscle tension here, it's going to take off the pressure up here because if that's imagine if that's as tight it's going to pull on the back of the neck and that can be a very classic way of getting you know sensitivity build up in the top here and causing its own problem in there but when someone, if someone's getting these cervicogenic problems from, say, sitting, all right, so sitting for far too long, and that might just be, you know, they work at a computer all day, they're just sitting there for far too long. Maybe they have got good posture, maybe they haven't got good posture, but the fact that they are just in a one position for too long puts a lot of load on here. So this muscle can get very loaded and stressed, just like if you overloaded doing bicep curls, the bicep would get really sore. So this muscle is most likely getting really sore and tight simply from just excessive load of the head being forward. Maybe in a slump position, your head is forward like that. The thing about that is, when that'll give you a problem here, but it may refer up and give you problems here, but it's usually the position of this part of the neck that they're in as well. So if you, if you think of someone who is slumped and forward and there's a bit of strain here, they've also got their chin forward, so they're jamming in here. So this part itself will be getting tight from the actual position as well. So this is usually why this one really flares up and goes up over here. So 
back to this, we are trying to loosen off that and get into it. Then we start coming up a little bit higher through the neck. So we'll follow that line and see what else is going on. Because eventually we're gonna end up with the soft tissue work, trying to get this released off around the back of the skull. So we start getting into territory where we're working on other muscles coming out the back of the skull here, up into your occipitals. And again, you've gotta be careful that you don't go and ignite more of a headache. You wanna be making sure this is a relieving pressure. So the pressure we go for is something that, yeah, it's a bit sore, but it's relieving pain. I always ask making sure that that pain that we're getting is relieving and making sure that headache is actually not getting worse. If anything, it's actually lessening while they're on the bed. And we'll come to the joint mobs in a minute, but that's where we'd end up going into and spending quite a bit of time working all around through the base of the skull on the side of where that soreness is and trying to find out where all that is. Simply just desensitizing this area, getting some blood flow in it, manually loosening up, just take some of that pressure off, take some of the stiffness out of it, and that drop and pull that you get through all this tissue drops the headache down, okay? So that's really important stuff. And yes, it's very sort of temporary, if you like, but that relieving, we, we're trying to break the cycle, if you like, of all this tension going through here so they can get onto their rehab, which we'll show you later on. So once we've done all that soft tissue work, then we work on some joint mobs. Now, the joint mobs part is really, from my point of view, a key component for this. The soft tissue work gives them that sort of relief, relaxes the muscle tissue around the joint so we can actually move the joint. A lot of the sort of tightness feeling you're feeling in a joint is actually the tightness of the muscle tissue holding the joint tight. So it feels like, oh, the joint's tight. The muscle tissue's holding the joint tight. So if we can sort of dial that down so she's relaxed a bit more, then I've got a better chance of working on mobilization. Now, because I've greased it up, I like using a towel. Now I've still got good feel through the towel of that, so I don't have to go skin on skin with this. It'll stop me slipping off, okay? And it gives me a good sort of grip on there. So what we're aiming for is your C2 and C3 on the central and we're obviously working on Claire's left hand side, central left. So with this one, what I like doing is making sure they're not dived into extension. So I've got to bring her into a bit of neutral so I can just grab her head and just tilt her that way. And then this part here is working on a direct PA pressure which is down that way and then gently lifting her back up again and just working out how much depth I need to go. Now in physio school we talk about grades, right? This one we're sort of aiming for, if it's a headache, I wouldn't probably be going more past two because if I start going for range too early, I might ignite some of that headache again. So we're after sort of pain relief. If they're super acute, we might have to start working on grade ones and things like that just to aim for some pain relief or some other snag type movements and setting. But for today, we're just showing you if this person's got a sort of, you know, mild headache, it's not super sensitive, um, it's more tight than it is sensitive, then we can start getting in, start loosening up. If that starts backing off and they find that, oh, it's getting less and less sore, then you can start getting more and more into range. So you can start you know, getting further maybe into grade three and getting to that end range and actually stretching the tissues around the joint, which helps with the whole drop in tension because a lot of these problems with cervical next are because it's too tight. All right? And they call them tension headaches for a sort of a reason because there's too much tension going on there. So if I can get that tension down, by actually mobilizing these joints, and that stimulates a bit of joint movement, it stimulates muscle release, it stimulates a bit of a drop in that real high level of tension going on there, they'll feel better, that headache will go away. So central work, then when we go on the side here, we just need to go on an angle that's going in that way a little bit more. I'm not gonna go straight down on that one, I'm gonna buy some little bit of an angle. So this one here, you've gotta make sure that you get right on that sort of right above that transverse process, more a little bit on the lamina if you like, and then diving in that way. And this one they'll probably find, oh, that's my headache. That's the point where I feel it. And again, just like the soft tissue massage, you've got to be at a level that it's a relieving feeling, it's not an aggravating one, monitoring what their headache is doing. And of course, when we stand them up or sit them up, we're gonna check their range again to make sure, is their range improving as well as their headache? Now, is their 
actual stiffness range that they've lost completely related to their headache. So if both things are improving, you know you're on the right track, then it's gonna be really effective. Um, and I'll get them to follow that up with you know, the same movements. If they're lost movement to right, left rotation, um, I'll get them doing left rotation work, um, that sort of thing. And the, the muscle strength that we'll go through <clears throat> after this is based on trying to improve muscle tone and get it out of spasm, get it out of stiffness for that area of the spine. So that's a really nice one we do. And we've spent quite a bit of time on doing posterior anterior, so PA work on those joints to try and get some more movement there, to drop the tension down, to stop that emanating headache coming out of that area. So what we're gonna work on next is the side glide. So the next mobile I like doing is transverse glides when they're in supine, because the good thing about this is I can also do a bit of traction for those people who are pretty acute and got a really sensitive neck. So I'm gonna show you on your right hand side, we did the left hand side, but I'll show you on your right because I'm facing you. With this one, what I like doing is just making sure that they don't have anything underneath them, okay? So you can get, because you're gonna get your arm underneath them and keep them in a neutral position. So this arm here, it'll look like I'm gonna nip and crack a neck, but we're not. We're gonna glide and just stretch the joint a little bit. This one is simply for guiding and cradling, if you like. So if I'm going from the right-hand side, I wanna work on the side of my sort of index finger in there and find that level, which is my C2, just straight into there. And for this one, we like going a little bit of sort of side glide first and taking up some of that slack, then getting in a bit of side bend, Okay, so I'm sort of more in the mid-range of the joint. And then so, because I'm already glided and bent, I don't have to do too much work here. I can just get in there and just do a very subtle movement there. And usually that is just coaxing the joint into bending. And this is really good for people who have lost the side bend ability. So when they tilt their head over, they, they can't tilt to the same side where the pain is. They've lost that movement or it's sore. So this is, you know, completely unloading her, she's not all relaxed in here, nothing sort of spazzing or guarding because there's no weight bearing going on holding her head up and those muscles don't have to stay on to hold her head up. So this position is great for her to relax in. I've just got to make sure I get her in the right position where I'm sort of mid to nearly to end range and then just slowly glide her that way. So the transverse glide works this way and that'll help each level get a bit of movement. You know, it's the movement she's not getting when she's doing it by herself because her brain is guarding her and, and, and blocking her and not letting her move. So it's pretty hard to get better or get your headache better if you can't move to get it better. So this is allowing that movement. It's, it's sneaking in movement of a joint that would not normally happen when your neck's all locked up. And so this will help get less tension through the joint and get those muscles backed off a bit, allow for more movement. So when she goes home and does her homework, she's got more range to deal with and she gets better faster. So the good thing about this is, this is, think of like this as facilitating her to be able to do her homework, okay? This is getting her better in the clinic, but it's not, you know, it's 50% of the, of the treatment. The other 50% is her doing her homework. Um, and that's, in the ideal world, the more movement she can do, the quicker she's gonna come right because it's, think of like the problem happens because she's not moving. Like if she's static at a computer, she's not doing anything, it's just static holds, the more neck range of movement she can do, the quicker she's gonna come right. So like I said, some people like doing a bit of traction work. Now there's two ways of sort of doing traction with this. For the upper cervical stuff, if you wanna get into just sort of suboccipital work, I like getting a, just my sort of fingers clawing in here, keeping in some sort of neutral. And then just, just gently dragging it this way, which just basically puts a bit of pressure through those subjects. So it's like almost like a massage, if you like, but stretches the tissues out and gives you a little bit of stretch um, through the spine as well. Now that's really nice for more of an upper cervical one. It's very gentle one, takes away some of the headaches sometimes, gives a bit of relief. Nice to do in between mob sets like that if someone's really acute. It's still a little bit different to someone where they've got perhaps a lower cervical, say disc problem, who needs a full traction, which is more like this, where you're coming in and grabbing the whole neck itself and going through head and gapping down there, so you just have a bit of anti-gravity. That sort of stuff's more related for someone who 
has a lower cervical stuff, which we're not dealing with today. The upper cervical, I like doing is up in here. So that's just a little snippet of some of the treatment we do for cervical genetics to try and release upper cervical tension and a little bit of that muscular tension through from the, from the neck right through to the shoulder blade. Next video we'll look at is what are the exercises we're gonna do for someone like this to stabilize the neck, to loosen up. So what exercises, we, um, stretches and strengthening we're gonna do for the neck plus the shoulder blade because you've gotta make sure you're doing work to settle down what the shoulder blade is doing because it's connected and it's all part of the process. See you next time.